Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Western Association for College Admission Counseling's Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions at the same website where you registered. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. And now I'm going to uh, turn it over to our presenters and put up the schedule for this 6x6, which is here in session B14. So I'll turn it over to Falmouth University to get us started. Hi everyone, thank you so much. My name is Jackie Christopher and I'm with Falmouth University. And the reason why we say we are a creative industries university is we are very focused in the arts and we want students to have that, gain that industry experience prior to them graduating, have the skills necessary for them to be successful. Um, so if arts um, are a very, um, you know, if that's, if that's something of interest and that is what you're looking for, then Falmouth is a great option for you. And that is my contact details below if you have any questions. So just to tell you a little bit about Falmouth University, we were established in 1902 as a school of art, but we were, uh, sorry, we started as a school of art in 1902, but we were established as a university in 2012. Um, we are a small, medium-sized university with roughly four, um, uh, roughly 5,000 students. So um, you get that real personal attention from your department and academics. We are the fourth safest university in England and Wales, and we have two campuses. Um, and they're 15 to 20 minutes apart by bus. Um, one is the Falmouth uh, campus, which is right off the beach. And then we have Penryn, which is the campus that you see um, in front of you. All students can access facilities on both campuses. And the really um, cool thing is that you can do cross departmental projects, which not many UK universities will allow. So just to tell you a little bit about where we're located, um, we are located in Southwest England, right in Cornwall. It's a beautiful location. And Cornwall, England, if you, have, if you don't know, is very touristy, very beautiful. There, you know, Falmouth has a quintessential British town. Um, a lot of students have access to the beaches. Um, they hike, they surf. Um, they boat, so there's a lot of different activities to do, and it's a very vibrant student life. So there's a lot of um, cafes, bars, exhibitions, and so forth. The closest airport to us is um, Newquay Airport, which is about 40 minutes away, um, and we're approximately five hours away from London by train. We do offer an airport service um, for all first year international students as well. So these are nine diverse departments. Um, and as you can see, they are um, you know, arts focused, but again, they're very career orientated. Um, so they, they definitely, we range with, um, a, we have a wide range of programs and very niche, very specific. Um, Academy of Music and Theater Arts, we have our own theater um, um, called Amata, um, where companies come in and you know they connect and network with the students, um, give them that access, but also there's uh, so many events going on for our students as well, or just even for the community. School of Entrepreneurship, we have lots of different business focused um, programs, but they are mainly geared towards entrepreneurship and um, being innovative and creative. We have Fashion and Textiles Institute, we have the Games Academy, we have an eSports program. Um, eSports is be, becoming very, very big. Um, gaming, creating gaming and so forth. We also have um, our Institute of Photography, School of Architecture, Design and Interiors, a School of Art, which has lots of fine art type of programs, School of Communications, especially digital media and um, what's going on nowadays. 
and also the School of Film and Television. So because we are such a creative university, there is a very creative, vibrant community within the university itself. And remember when I was saying that we have roughly 5,000 students, the average class size in each, um, each classroom is roughly 15 students. Um, but the great thing is everyone, you know, because we are so, we have a creative university, you're collaborating with a lot of creative students. And, you know, you might be a dance student who needs, you know, their performance to be videographed. Well, there is, you know, you might have a film student in the same, living in the same flat as you that can help support you around that. Um, we have an example where um, a student who is, who is in film loves Star Wars, but wanted to um, create like this sort of spaceship for his projects in film. So the program conveyor actually went to uh, the School of Art, asked them, hey, you know, he wants to do welding. Um, he wants to create a, sp a spaceship for his film. Would it be possible if he can gain that experience and so forth? Yes, they loved it. They, they supported him around that. After he graduated, um, he came to that program conveyor and he was like, oh my God, how's, how's everything going? The student who's now an alum said, oh yeah, everything's great. You won't believe who I'm working for right now. He's like, who? Oh, I'm working on the Star Wars set. So just those type of things that really make a difference. Um, but thank you so much. Um, and this is my contact information. We do not accept um, SATs, ACTs, nor APs. Um, we just accept a uh, high school transcript, essay, personal statement, and you would need to submit a portfolio and an interview. You can apply either through UCAS or through our free online application. Thank you. And I'm going to pass it on to Goldsmith. All right. So as Jackie mentioned, up next, we'll hear from Goldsmith University. Hello, everyone. My name is Will. I'm the International Officer for Goldsmiths University of London. I'm based in Brooklyn, New York. Um, Goldsmiths is a top tier public research institution. We were founded in 1891 and our campus has about 10,000 students. You won't be alone over there. There's about uh, 380 Americans among that population. Uh, it's our second largest cohort on campus of uh, international students. Uh, it's also one of the most international schools in the world and the top 60 uh, most international schools in the world. We have about a third of our student population coming from outside the UK from over 140 countries. Uh, it's also a very diverse school, about 43% are first generation students, um, over half are students of color, and we have a very sizable LGBTQ population on campus, about 15%. We've also committed recently to our personal Green New Deal, which is 90% carbon neutrality by 2025. Um, we've done some interesting things on campus, uh, like banning beef in all of our cafeterias and restaurants, uh, banning single use plastics. So we've really committed to this, and we're hoping that uh, our students will get on board as well. We are, uh, 10 of our 18 academic departments are among the top 100 in the world, seven of which are in the top 50. We're very well known for communications and media and art and design, um, but you'll see a full listing of all of our um, over 70 degree programs in just a second. Um, in the UK, uh, we have three-year degree programs. So it is a shorter, more focused degree and it is direct entry. So it's a little bit different from what you might be used to uh, from an American university. As such, we really dive deeply into our subjects. So doing research is really crucial to your degree. And at Goldsmiths, we have over 55 research centers and units on campus. Some of them are in conjunction with other University of London schools, but most of them are run by Goldsmiths. And one thing I also will point out is our post-study work visa in the UK, which will allow you to remain in the country for up to two years after you graduate. So one main reason you might want to pick Goldsmiths is our wonderful location. We are about 15 minutes from the city center of London. Our campus is self-contained, so all your courses will be held within that yellow dotted line there. You'll notice we have a tube station right next to our campus. And that will take you right into the city center for all those uh, great internships and work placements that we offer. Uh, you'll see we have a college green right here, a lovely place to grab lunch. It's not always rainy in London. Uh, there are plenty of sunny days. 
Uh, and you'll notice our residence halls are located quite close by, so you can easily walk to your classes. And here is a uh, non-exhaustive listing of our uh, course offerings. Some popular programs for students from California are often uh, our media communications program, which houses our screen school for film, radio, and television. We also have a journalism, media advertising programs. Uh, computer science is also extremely popular. We have games programming. Um, also all of our uh, undergraduate business programs, we've been ranked in the top 10 in the UK for undergraduate business, according to The Guardian last year. Um, music and theater are also very popular as well as psychology. So cost is always a concern when you're looking to go abroad, obviously, um, but we try to make it as affordable as possible at Goldsmiths. So the vast majority of our tuition is going to be um, around 20,000 to 25,000 US dollars per year. We do offer international scholarships to students and you can use federal loans and Parent PLUS loans. Uh, and we do accept external scholarships as well. Uh, we estimate the total cost of attendance every year to be about 35 to 40,000 US dollars per year, depending on how frugal of a student you are. Um, so it's basically equivalent to uh, how much uh, a University of California school might be um, without any additional aid. Accommodation at Goldsmiths is across nine halls of residence. We have about 1400 rooms to offer our students. We do guarantee accommodation for you as international students in the first year. It's suite style accommodation, but luckily you have your own room with your own bathroom. So it's a little bit different from what you might be used to uh, in these crowded American dorms. Uh, you will share a kitchen and living space with other students. Anywhere between four and eight students are in a suite. Uh, we are self-catered, so we have no uh, meal plans, but we do have uh, cafeterias and restaurants and cafes on campus where you can go grab a bite. Uh, it makes it much more, uh, I don't know, fun. You can cook with your flatmates in the evening, get to know them better. Uh, it, it definitely lends to a, a different experience, more independent. We also put a really heavy emphasis on careers at Goldsmiths. So you'll have the support for our, from our career service for up to three years after you graduate. And we have a vast alumni network of hundreds of thousands of students all over the world. Uh, over 3,000 of them are in the U.S., we also have one of the highest rates in London for students to find full-time work or enter postgraduate study in their field within six months. It's about nine and 10 students. Um, we also, as I mentioned before, do offer work placements and internships as part of our programs. Uh, the vast majority have them built in, or you can do what we call a sandwich year, where you take an additional year of school uh, and do a sort of work placement uh, during your, what would be your third year of school. We also have an enterprise hub opening on campus um, next spring that will act as a business incubator for all those entrepreneurs in the room. We do uh, have the highest entrepreneurial rate in London. So about 15% of our students do start their own business within one year of graduation. Um, quickly, a, we're a direct application to degree programs through UCAS. Uh, the application every year closes the 15th of January. We do require 3.0 unweighted GPA to apply and we have gone test optional for this and next year. Um, so with that, uh, please connect with us uh, on our website. We have a virtual tour that's great. Uh, my email address is there in case you have any questions uh, and I'll pass it off to my next colleague. All right, thank you. So next we'll hear from the University of Edinburgh. Hi, everybody. My name is Hilary Sementina, and I'm the West Coast representative for the University of Edinburgh based in California. So Edinburgh is the capital city of Scotland. It's a very friendly and diverse city with about just over half a million people and population. And students actually make up 15% of the population. There are four universities in Edinburgh, but the University of Edinburgh is the largest. And as a capital city, it has everything that you would expect, um, museums, theater, cinemas, nightlife, shops, et cetera. Um, but it's a very compact and walkable city. Uh, you do not need a car to get around. Most students will walk or take the bus or ride a bike. Um, so it has a very neighborhoodly feel to it, even though it's a metropolitan city. 
University of Edinburgh is one of the ancient Scottish universities founded in 1583 and we are currently ranked 20th in the world. We are a research-led institution and actually over 80% of our academic staff are actively involved in research and this is across many subject areas. As Scotland's largest university, we are very open to the world and welcoming of students from diverse backgrounds. We have about 18,000 international students. So that's 41% of our student population come from countries outside of the United Kingdom. We have over 45,000 students in total and about 25,000 of those are undergraduates. So we are a very large institution. And you can see we are proudly the number one destination in the United Kingdom for students from the US and Canada. And our student clubs and societies and events um, celebrate and support our diverse both student and staff community. So our university is divided into three colleges, but that's not to say it's a collegiate system like Oxford or Cambridge. We have the College of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences, which is the largest of the three. That's where you'll find our degree programs like business studies, um, our languages, architecture, English literature. Then we have the College of Science and Engineering, which will have computer science or informatics as we call it, um, mathematics, engineering, and then our smallest is the College of Medicine and Veterinary Medicine, where our medical and vet students study. So as a large institution, you would expect we have a lot of degree programs. We have over 400 undergraduate degrees across 58 subjects. And our academic year is divided into two semesters. Semester one is from September until December. Then you take your exams. The university closes for two weeks over winter break. And then semester two is from January until May, where then you will take exams at the end of May. So undergraduate study in Scotland is slightly different than the rest of the United Kingdom. But typically an undergraduate degree is four years in length. So just like the North American system, actually the Scottish system did directly influence the North American undergraduate system. Um, so because our programs are four years long, that means you have flexibility in the subjects that you study in your first two years. So although you will take some compulsory courses for your major in your first and second year, you also can take elective courses from other subject areas that you're interested in. Then once you get into your third year, that's when you're all specializing your subject and really focus in on your major. And a lot of our programs also offer students the opportunity to study abroad in their third year. Studying at Edinburgh and in the UK in general, we um, encourage independent self-guided study, um, critical thinking and robust reasoning. And importantly, I saw this was a question that somebody had posted. Our degrees are internationally recognized. You don't have to worry if you get your undergraduate degree from Edinburgh or any UK institution, it will be recognized in the United States. So outside of the classroom, we offer Welcome Week in September, the week before classes begin, which have orientation activities and events for new students. The University of Edinburgh has over 290 student groups and societies, which I actually believe is more than any other UK institution. And we have 64 sports clubs. Uh, you can play at an elite level for the university where you're on our university teams competing against other British and European institutions, or you can play very casually on our intramural teams. We have over 9,000 residential rooms for students to live in our university housing, and we have a range of options to suit your preferences and budget. And importantly, international undergraduate students are guaranteed university accommodation as long as you submit your application by the deadline. On campus, we also have health and well being and support services such as a counseling center, disability services, health center, career service, etc. So now that you've decided you like the sound of Edinburgh and you want to apply, um, that's great. We encourage applications from well-qualified applicants. You, you apply to all of our undergraduate programs through UCAS, which is like the UK's version of the Common App. And we do have specific entry requirements for US applicants. We were test flexible for this year. Hopefully we will be for next year as well, but it hasn't been decided yet. 
And so to finish off, you can take a virtual tour of our university or chat to our student ambassadors to get their experience. And please send any emails, questions you have to our future students email address on the screen. Thank you very much. Fantastic. And next we'll hear from the University of Glasgow. All right, hello everybody. My name is Ashley Sabajan. I am the Senior International Officer for the University of Glasgow. I'm based in Southern California and I act as the local point of contact for all students in the West of US. The University of Glasgow was founded in 1451. We are the fourth oldest institution in the English speaking world. We're also consistently ranked as one of the world's top 100 universities and we are a member of the Russell Group Institutions in the UK. We have around 29,000 students, but what's really cool about that student body is that there's over 140 nationalities represented. We have around 1,000 North Americans studying on campus with us. Our students are very involved and very active. We have over 250 clubs and societies that our students participate in. So that makes it especially easy for international students to find um, their friends and sense of community when they move to study at the University of Glasgow. Scotland was voted the most beautiful country in the world by Rough Guides in 2019. Um, I can attest you don't have to travel very far to get fine scenery like what's in this picture. It's great for students who have a sense of adventure. Our students love getting out and exploring more of the country um, and seeing what's right on their back doorstep. There's a ton of outdoor activities and of course, arts, culture, and history to take in. So if you have a student with a sense of adventure or if you are a student with a sense of adventure, Scotland might be a great place to study. The University of Glasgow is located in Glasgow, Scotland. So Glasgow is the largest city in Scotland and the fourth largest in the UK. Um, there's always something going on in the city. Um, there's six universities and colleges based in Glasgow. So it's very student friendly as well. Glasgow is also UNESCO city of music. And on average, there's over 150 music events that take place across the city every single week. So everything from those really um, small hole in the wall music venues all the way up to the Hydro, which is pictured here, which is actually the second busiest arena venue in the world. So there's always something for our students to do. Most of our students will actually live in the West End of Glasgow. So our university campus is located in Glasgow's West End. This is about a 25 minute walk from the city center of Glasgow, but we also have fantastic public transport um, so there's a subway system, there's trains, buses, but whenever I'm there, I just walk. It's very pedestrian friendly and easy to get around. Um, so the West End is where you're going to find more cobbled streets, beautiful architecture. It's a much more laid back part of town where our students live. And there's, it's known for um, being the foodie quarter of the city as well, which is nice. Just to give you an idea of what our campus looks like. So although we have a larger student population of 29,000 students, our campus is pretty manageable in terms of getting around. You can get from one end to the other in about 10 minutes time. Um, this is our main building there. So our campus sits on top of a hill. So from many parts of the city, you can look up and see our main building. But if you stand on the 13th floor of our library, you also get a great view of the rest of the city. I always like to point out our Fraser building as well because it houses many of our student support services and resources. So we have a dedicated international student support team that are based there, as well as careers advisors, study abroad team, and even a doctor's office right on campus. In terms of what you can study, I would say that business management, computing sciences, engineering, and psychology are amongst some of our most popular courses, but we have well over 300 degree combinations available. There are plenty of major minor options or joint degree options. Um, so the choice is really up to you. It's been mentioned uh, before that in Scotland, we do actually offer a four-year degree structure. 
What's really good about this is you get the best of both worlds. There's flexibility and choice, but with focus. So there's no core, ed, no core curriculum or general education requirements. You study your major from day one, but you still get to take classes from outside of your major. So you still get to have that flexibility as well as choice. In terms of entry requirements, we are test optional this year at the University of Glasgow, but if you are planning on submitting test scores, we would typically look for any three of the following. So 1280 SAT, ACT of 27 or above, and APs at four or above. Any combination, uh, but three in total. And for test optional, feel free to ask me more questions about this at the end, but typically this is what we would be looking for. In terms of just additional information to round things up, our tuition starts at about 25,000 US dollars per year of study. Living expenses is pretty affordable at around $1,000 a month to budget for. We do accept FAFSA as well as the GI. We guarantee international students accommodation and we have some scholarships available. Thank you all for listening and please do feel free to keep in touch with me if you have any questions and I will now pass you over to my colleague. Great, thank you. And so next up we will hear from King's College London. Great. Hi, everyone. Heading back down to London. My name is Ashley Monaghan. I am an international student recruitment manager for King's College London. I am based in uh, the eastern region of the US. And um, King's is a very large urban campus population. We have about 30,000 students, 16,000 of which are international students. So it's a very diverse multicultural student population and community, much like the city of London itself. We are known for being London's most central um, university. We have five London campuses. Four are located along the River Thames. You can see from the photo here, um, this is our Strand campus. So you can see that it runs right along the river. And we also have one campus that's about three miles south of the river, so in South London, still very centrally located. Uh, we have about a dozen residence halls for our students and much like other um, universities that we've heard from tonight, we guarantee accommodation for first year undergraduate students. Our, your utilities are included, there's 24 hour security that's available to these students. You do get your own room, which is a huge perk. Um, I think it was Will that mentioned that earlier. And um, I always say that's the cheapest that you'll live in the center of London in your life is as a student. And the city really does cater to the student population in regards to resources available. Um, but if you're able to and you're interested in that uh, central living accommodation, it's definitely something to take advantage of. We also have private accommodation options and an entire dedicated team to help you with whatever living situation you're most comfortable with, especially since a lot of people are not used to living in a city the size of London. So another thing to mention about our residence halls that ties into our active um, student campus life, we do offer programming um, and opportunities that are available to really make your residence your living situation a lot like a community feel. So as I mentioned, we have our five campuses in London. We have a very active students union at King's College. So that is similar to a lot of what US and North American students experience. And that is, um, there's a lot of opportunities. I think over 300 societies we had marked last year, ways for you to get involved on campus. So um, it kind of helps navigate that experience of feeling like a bigger fish in a smaller pond when you're living in a city of about 8 million people. London was voted the number one best student city most recently in 2019 by QS. And that is because it really does, like I mentioned, cater to that student population. I believe there's 45 universities, about half a million students studying in London at any time. So um, King's has a very unique um, a unique feature of being able to offer that student campus community, especially since we are so centrally located. 
Um, and also, what can you study? Because it is a university. We have nine different faculties, and within those faculties, we have 175 different programs. We are renowned for our health and our research faculties, but growing in popularity, especially with our U.S. students, are um, programs within our arts and humanities. We have a new program called Digital Culture and Media that is um, very popular, very unique. It's one of the only ones of its kind being offered. And also some of our social science, um, social sciences, public policies, neuroscience, psychiatry, um, those kinds of programs are internationally recognized. So um, as was mentioned before in response to the question, you can get a degree at King's um, or at um, any of our UK institutions and practice back home in the States. We are part of the Russell Group. King's is, um, which is a, an association of 24 public research universities in the UK. So as I mentioned, and similar to other universities that are part of the Russell Group, research really is a core value to us at King's. You can uh, participate in research at the undergraduate level. So if you graduate in three years, you have the potential to graduate with published research under your belt, which is um, a very unique opportunity available to our, to our undergraduate um, graduates. And as I mentioned, our health and research faculties are renowned and very popular, very competitive. Um, our top three most popular programs at King's are law, business, and medicine. We are the sixth in the UK for employability and 93% of our graduates are furthering their studies or are in, in employment after they graduate. And all of these features are what makes King's number three in London, number seven in the UK and number 31 in the world according to QS. I do believe it was also mentioned, I think it was Will again, I, I keep quoting Will, but um, worth mentioning again that our degree programs are um, three years in length. So you, and that's not necessarily across the board, but at the undergraduate level, um, it really allows you to dive into the deep end of your program. We don't have general elective courses. Um, and if that is a value to you, as well as a value of um, studying at in an urban campus and a large student body like King's, then maybe King's is the place for you. So I encourage you to get in touch with me. I have a QR code there on the screen. My email is available. In times like these, when you can't take um, campus tours and when you cannot go visit all of our campuses to really get that feel to um, differentiate each of our campuses, I would encourage you to do virtual campuses, but also speak to current students, alumni, if that's available, so that you can um, learn more, not just about the academic side of our universities, but also the social side, the accommodation side, things like that. Thank you very much. Thanks, Joelle. Thanks, Ashley. And so our final school of the 656 is the London Metropolitan University. Hello everyone, how's everyone doing today? Um, my name is Jadon Joyner and I'm representing London Metropolitan University. And I do not sound like that at all. So since it rained in Los Angeles, California, where I'm based, I was feeling a little British today. But in all seriousness, I am based in Los Angeles. And so I, along with Megan Guiding, we cover the United States and we help students with any questions that they might have about the university. And so I'm looking forward to connecting with you all in the future. And so a little bit about London Metropolitan, we are based in central London. We have two campuses, our Holloway Road and Altgate campuses. We have 10,000 students with over 147 nationalities represented. Um, like Will and Ashley mentioned, um, in London at least, we have a three-year bachelor's program and a one-year master's program. So you can kind of get um, a lot out of those four years if you um, end up going to London Metropolitan. Um, we also, also offer international student scholarships and we accept US financial aid and we have veterans benefits. So one thing that's really big at, uni at London Metropolitan um, University is we believe in diversity. And so we believe in making university accessible for 
really anyone and everyone. And so, as I mentioned before, over 147 uh, um, um, nationalities are represented in London Metropolitan. Over 60% of our students come from um, a Black, Asian, or minority ethnic group. 96% um, of our students, staff, and faculty come from an underrepresented group in um, um, higher education. And we also have a, a growing US student um, population and alumni group. And so we're looking to expand and make university accessible to everyone um, around the world. And so one of our famous alumnus is uh, Sadiq Khan, who is the current mayor of London. And he really represents that diversity that exists at London Metropolitan. And he believes in London as a higher education of um, capital of the world. And that's what, um, and that's what London Met strives to be. And so again, uh, we have the three year and one year master's program and kind of in terms of costs, um, we are about $35,000 total. So that includes flights back and forth from California or from the West Coast, um, housing, tuition, food, groceries, travel, kind of all of that. And so we're again, really affordable, especially when you compare us to private options or out of state options. And so we're, I'm gonna bust through a couple pictures just so you guys can get a feel for the campus. Cause I know a lot of us, we can't, we, we can't go to London right now and get a tour, but this is our Holloway Road campus, which is kind of like our right brain where we have our business, our human sciences, our social sciences. We also have our library, our gym, our student union. And if you're interested in uh, football or soccer as we call it in the United States, um, our Arsenal plays at Emirates Stadium, which is right next to our Holloway Road campus. And then if you're interested in traveling, um, London is um, London's Heathrow Airport is actually the most internationally connected airport in the world where you can go anywhere really in the world. But if you would like to take a quick train ride, we are five minutes from King's Cross Station and St. Pancras Station, where you can take, a, take the Eurostar to go to Paris or to Brussels. But then if you're also a fan of um, Harry Potter, you can actually take the train and go to Hogwarts from platform nine and nine and three quarters. And so um, that's just a little bit about our Hallway Road campus. And then we have our Altgate campus, which is really our artistically um, driven campus where we have architecture, design, photography, fine arts. And so it's is a really cool area in East London. And so we have only over 200 different undergraduate and postgraduate programs. And so if you're interested in science, we have a 30 million um, pound, which is like $35 million uh, science um, super lab, which is actually one of the largest in all of Europe. And then a lot of times when people think about London, they think about this old architecture and traditional and very conventional. And one of the things we've tried to do at London Med is kind of combine that, fuse that with a very modern, sleek design. And so we've really updated and made everything really feel very modernized and very and very um, a new generation, as I would say. Um, so you can check out here some of our cutting edge classrooms. We also are very much into media. And so we have a TV studio and newsroom that students have access to, along with our art, architecture and design studios. And so what's really interesting is I'm not really the biggest artist in the world, but it's really great. So you can see all of your classmates and, and um, all of their art, which is kind of all around campus. And then we also have different cafes, bars, and chill out zones that students have access to. And as a London Met student, you can get discounts to go to different things around the city. So for instance, if you were into, into, into theater, you could see possibly um, like the Lion King for like $30. And so, it's a really awesome opportunity to be a part of London Met. We have gyms, sports halls, dance studios. And then just in terms of the application, um, we have an autumn and a um, winter date. And so if you're interested, let me just kind of skip here, just so you can see my contact info. If you have any questions about the university, feel free, you can just take a screenshot um, and email me and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And so I'm very, excited and uh, looking forward to connecting with you all soon.
<laughs> Perfect timing. Thank All you. right, so with our last couple of minutes, um, just last five minutes to go, I'm going to put up a couple of questions for our panelists, and then uh, we'll go in presentation order so they can answer. So let me get that slide up for you. And first up, uh, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process right now? So we'll go back and start at the top with uh, Falmouth. Oh boy, um, gosh, um, how to even start? Well, first off, if you know what subject you want to study, I would definitely use UCAS as a resource because they have a university search tool. That's very, very helpful. But then again, there's all 150, 180 UK universities listed. Um, so that might be a little bit overwhelming, but it's a good start. Um, and then I would also speak to guidance counselors or um, any uh, college counselor professionals that, you know, could help you and support you around that. Um, I always give a slightly unconventional tip, but um just enjoy high school also. Like, uh, don't worry like too much about the college process until really your junior year. It's great to research and really like know, um, you know, things in anticipation of applying for school. But at the same time, like high school is only four years long. It's really important that you get to enjoy it. Um, so that's, that's my one piece of advice. Yeah, I would say for the University of Edinburgh or if you're considering coming to the UK, if you really, know what you want to study and the major you want to do, then maybe a three-year concentrated program in England would be good for you. But if you do have an idea of what you want to study, but you still want to take some optional courses, maybe thinking about changing your degree a little bit later, then the Scottish system might be better for you. Yeah, and I think for me, the one thing I always try to get across to students who are thinking about studying overseas especially is don't be intimidated by the process, don't be put off by the different terms that you might come across, and don't be afraid to reach out to your college reps because we're here to help. So as somebody who is an American who did their undergraduate degree in Scotland, everything that seems like a, an issue or something that's intimidating right now fades into the background as soon as you arrive. Just kind of adding to that, I think talk to as many current students at whatever university you're looking at, as I, I briefly mentioned, uni buddy, um, but also don't compare yourself to your peers if they are applying to solely US universities, because the UK system, it's a longer cycle, it's a longer um, application process. So it just, it's not worth comparing, but um, yeah, talk to as many people who have gone through that process as you can. And then I would say to travel, whether you end up choosing an American university and doing study abroad or one of our UK universities and doing your full degree abroad, definitely travel. Being in college is one of the best times to you know, travel for cheaply, travel, travel for free. Obviously, if you choose a UK university, you have Europe and Africa and the Middle East and just all these different places that you can go really quickly and really um, easily but please travel. You will definitely look back and be like, why didn't I go anywhere? So definitely, definitely travel. All right, so with our last couple of minutes, I know we don't have much time, so I'm gonna ask our panelists to keep their answers short, but this is my absolute favorite question, especially with such an international crowd. Let's, um, I would love to hear what your favorite event or tradition on campus is, and then uh, just, also give the reps the last couple minutes to um, make sure they hit all those Q and A's before we wrap up. All right, so um, our fa my favorite uh, event on campus is um, Freshers' Fair where you get to um, meet new students. Uh, have, there's clubs that you can register for, sports, um, sports clubs, um, and also there's plenty of bands and a lot of um, different events going on where you can meet other students. Um, for Goldsmiths, I usually mention all of our sort of arts-based things. So we um, help throw the London International Film Festival every other year. Um, we put on tons of degree shows for our students with galleries all over London um, through our exhibitions hub. Um, and we also participate in the London uh, 
I believe it's called the International Festival of Music uh, every year as well. Uh, Pure Gold is what we call it. Um, so those are some of the fun events we put on annually. One of my favorite events at Edinburgh is at the end of the academic year, all of the fashion students put on a big fashion show um, with their designs and it's usually held in the National Museum of Scotland or one of our big halls at the campus. And it's a really huge event where members of the public love to attend as well. I really enjoy that. And I think for students at the University of Glasgow, a really fun event is actually the International Student Orientation Week. So this takes place the week before your classes start. So you've just moved in um, and the whole week is just full of events and it's essentially open doors for all societies. So it's just a really fun time to meet other people. Um, there's lots of events that take place, like there's Kaylee dances at night which is just tra uh, traditional Scottish dancing um, so it's a great way to you know right off the bat meet other international students. At King's we have um, a global day of service at the end of March every year and it's um, kind of it's tied into our founding but it's also tied into our um, commitment to service that we really try to drive home um, as one of our ethos. But um, this year it's virtual, of course, but in years past, it's just been like a day of commitment to volunteering and opportunities and we'll see what it looks like uh, this year, but yeah. And then I'm gonna steal Ashley's. Uh, I would also say orientation week. So when you touch down in London and you don't know anyone, but then all of a sudden you kind of see people and that are representing London Metropolitan and you get a chance to interact, interact with all the other international students from all over the world. It's just a, a different kind of energy that you're not really used to um, just seeing London and kind of its richness and all of that. And so I would definitely say orientation week. All right, so with that, we will wrap up. We do have another session starting in just a few minutes. So I wanna say thank you to all of the panelists and participants that joined us today. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. And again, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. I've got another one starting in a couple minutes. We've got them all throughout the spring. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash WA. CAC. And if the panelists didn't get to your question, they do have your contact info, so they'll be able to follow up with you as well. So with that, I want to say thank you to everybody who joined us, and I'll see some of you in just a few minutes. Have a nice evening.